Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this another updates video on the tropics. So in this video, we are going to be talking about what is now tropical storm Carlos and then we will also talk about the disturbance that is located in the Gulf of Mexico given a medium chance of development. So is that going to be developing by the end of this week? Where will it go? And out of curiosity, will this achieve hurricane status? We'll talk about the potential for all of that later down in this video guys and so before I go into details Okay, guys, and so let's kick start things with Tropical Storm Carlos. And so at this time, uh, the system is over in the Eastern Pacific, not a threat to land. And also, guys, we have that other disturbance located well to the east of Carlos. And so at this time, the chance has definitely decreased for that system. Uh, due to the Gulf disturbance, it is going to be helping this system here to not develop, guys. And so regardless of development, this system is going to be producing heavy rainfall. And most likely, this is going to be affecting Mexico and portions of of Central America guys and so going on to Carlos and so this time Carlos has sustained winds of 45 miles per hour strengthened a bit and it is accelerating to the west at around 8 miles per hour and so we're expecting to be moving a bit to the south and then make a turn up to the north uh, beginning by late Monday going into Tuesday and then the system is expected to be downgraded to a depression by Thursday it is going to eventually dissipate in the open Pacific Ocean guys and so fortunately as I said this system is is not a threat to land as of right now it is not expected to be a hurricane but it is going to be on a strength and trend maybe for the next day or so guys before we start to see significant weakening of the system and so guys now let us go on to our gulf disturbance which is invest 92l so this has the potential to become our next name storm bill and so as you're seeing on satellite view it is looking quite disorganized but as time goes back conditions are expected to get more favorable and near the end of this week maybe sometime on thursday or friday or somewhere down there this thing could achieve depression status once environmental conditions are favorable to enable it to to further develop and intensify and so let's look at what our models are showing here and so we have quite a bit of our models expecting that this thing is going to achieve hurricane status which i find to be quite interesting and so take a look at that we have the four models that are expecting this to start intensifying being a tropical storm and then gradually achieve hurricane status from about 84 hours out guys so this is going to be quite interesting to see why we have some other models not really anticipating this to develop into a tropical cycle Cyclone, guys so at this point i don't think that the system is going to be a hurricane and landfall but we cannot outrule the possibilities because this thing is going to be moving quite erratic let's take a look at what the national hurricane center's uh, five-day outlook for this system is saying and so here we have it so 50 percent chance to develop during the next five days so this thing is really going to be moving erratic and just loitering in the bay of campeche and it is also going to be enhancing the rainfall across sections of central america and mexico and so with that motion if conditions are going to be getting more and more favorable that means that the system is only going to be intensified so the more time it has over in the warm ocean waters of the gulf the more time it has to intensify and the stronger it will become so the best case scenario would be if conditions are unfavorable which prevent the system from intensifying much but the worst case scenario would be that conditions are very are highly favorable for this to develop and then it is not really moving so again the more time it has over those warm ocean waters which is basically like its fuel the more time it's going to be having to intensify and reach its full potential and so you might be wondering where along the gulf coast state is going to be hit let's go and see what our models are expecting from this and so first up is the gfs model and so guys this is by friday the 18th of june so this friday going into the weekend and so here we have the black lines which are the isobars coming together and so the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars that is the low pressure system usually your tropical cyclones and so guys there we have most likely probably depression at that point right there but not the very best in terms of organization let's go further out so this is sunday the 20th of june so a week from now and so we have a 1000 millibar low pressure system here so this is definitely a name storm at this point and then 
we see that Texas and Louisiana are probably starting to feel impacts from the system, uh, as well as the Yucatan down there, maybe some of the other bands from it could be affecting the area with some inclement weather conditions. And then let's go further out. This is something that I find to be very, very interesting. So you would think that the system would just make its way into Texas, right? But here we have it uh, apparently making a turn a bit to the west headed to Louisiana. And so the pressure has dropped to 989 millibars. So that is likely a strong tropical storm at that point over the southern portion of Louisiana. So is Louisiana going to be the area of landfall? We cannot say for sure because of course this thing is still pretty far out and so we cannot really make any set predictions because we will have these models continuously changing. And then as we go to the 22nd of June on Tuesday, we see that the system is now making its way inland. And so we see that even though Louisiana, as been shown by GFS, is the landfall area, we see that the other states are being affected, right? So it's not just a state that is expected to have landfall that is going to be impacted by the system surrounding areas can feel the impacts as well and so now let's see what the euro is showing so euro is not showing anything much developing in the gulf really so this is saturday the 19th of june so this is this weekend and we're not seeing the isobars really coming together in the gulf there and so going further out on sunday we're not seeing much so probably just an area of disturbed weather as being shown by euro it is just going to be making its way to the Gulf Coast affecting Texas, Louisiana, and probably Mexico as well. But let's go on to CMC and see what they're showing. And so here we have it showing something a little similar to the GFS. So this is Friday the 18th of June. We see those isobars coming together nicely. Let's go further out. And we see that this system here is making its way to Texas, Louisiana area right there. So our models so far have been consistent with Texas, Louisiana right there being the area of landfall for this system. And so if you're in any of those states, you really want to be cautious and take this or precautions because this thing could surprise us. I mean, we've had so many scenarios where we have Gulf systems and they just sneak up on us and we're just surprised by them. And then by Sunday, the 20th, we see that the system has made its way inland and affecting Louisiana, probably the most easterly side of Texas, as well as Mississippi, guys. And so, again, guys, none of this is ever guaranteed to happen because, of course, things are expected to change and... We just have to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be. And so in terms of the current wind shear, not the best in the Gulf right now, but as time goes by, we're expecting conditions to improve. So we have unfavorable shear dominating most of the North Atlantic Basin, which is indicated by the reds. Uh, the yellows mean neutral shear and the greens mean favorable. And so we're seeing that an unfavorable environment is currently there in the Gulf of Mexico. But as time goes by, as we approach the end of this week, we're expecting some improvements and a more favorable environment for or invest 92l and so guys let's take a look at the ocean temperature map in the gulf of mexico right now and we're seeing here that ocean temperatures are very very supportive so ocean temperature is definitely supportive and so as we're going to be heading into the peak of the season this could be a hot spot for our systems to rapidly intensify if they do move into the gulf uh, once the shear is favorable once there is little land interaction and so we really just have to wait and see what the outcome is going to be with our invest 92l but as of right now i would say that if you are along the gulf coast it doesn't matter which state it could be texas louisiana mississippi alabama even the florida panhandle you really want to stay updated and just remember what to do during a tropical cyclone landfall you want to be away from the coastline or flood prone areas so you want to be in a spot that is elevated and safe and also you want to ensure that you have your emergency kit with your radio your batteries and um, your important files and documents is something that is waterproof, guys. So you have to make all those preparations from now. And that is why we emphasize preparing before the hurricane season starts. Because here we are, uh, June is about to end in a couple of days. And so here we have our gulf system that has the potential to become a tropical cyclone and if it does we don't know how strong it is going to get so we just have to wait and see but as of right now just take the necessary precautions and prepare and so guys that is it for this update and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be otherwise and of course i'll keep giving updates as time goes by